Good morning, Rich Mayor. It's good to see y'all all this morning. And uh, you see I'm wearing my yellow. It's gonna be a little bit different today. We're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do a little splicing of different videos together. But the first one will be just me. And uh, then when we get down to our devotion time, uh, Steve Lassiter, who has been uh, there with me one time, he's the one that took our pictures, he's gonna come in and he's gonna do the devotion. Uh, this is something that we've already taped, so I'm just going to add it on. I'll be in the picture too, but he'll be doing most of the talking. Uh, if you remember where we left off last time, uh, I had made several trips over to Sabadilla, and we had helped out some people, so uh, job well done on our trip number three, which happened on Tuesday. And uh, Tuesday night, Carlos preached in Spanish, if you remember. Now we're going to move on to Wednesday morning. And uh, Wednesday morning started like every morning in the village, except Thursday when all we do is leave, uh, with devotion. And my devotion, if you remember, my third division devotion was on Jaguars, and that's what I did on Wednesday morning. And it was kind of special because Wednesday in the village, March 11th, was my birthday. So people sang to me all day. I got some presents. It was really kind of a neat day. And then we headed off to Sabadilla again, this time we were taking some Bibles over to present to the church there. So this is a picture of us on the porch uh, with the wife of the pastor. The pastor actually was also a school teacher, so he was away teaching school, but his wife was there, and we left the Bibles there at their home. This is the pastor at Coralito who's sitting down. Uh, if you remember, we've talked about him previously. But this was like the only time I've ever been to Honduras that I had to make what I would call a speech. And it was impromptu because I didn't know I was going to do that. But we were just telling them why we brought the Bibles, what the Bibles were really used for. And it was really kind of a neat moment to be able to do that. And after we got done with that, uh, I helped out in making a little bit of concrete. Uh, we made like three trips to Sabadilla on Wednesday. The first time... Uh, we helped mix the concrete and after that they were using the concrete to lay down some tile in the home and on our uh, following two trips we could see how far they had advanced in putting down the tiles it was kind of neat to watch and uh, kind of one of the sidelights of the trip okay now one of the things that you have to know about the dogs in Honduras is they don't get their dogs spayed and neutered and uh, so certain times of the year the dogs can be kind of wild because the female well you know uh, what nature is. But anyway, the dogs were kind of uh, wild and they they uh, bit this little boy, attacked him on the face. And w as we were walking by, uh, we saw that the, uh, the little boy was injured and uh, we were able to take him. Remember, we had a truck. We were able to take him back over to Coralito in the truck along with his, with his mother and there, uh, because we had medical help there, Dr. Hop stitched him up. You know, Dr. Hop is a pediatrician, so he's used to working with little ones. And, you know, I, I kind of call this a miracle because if we had not been there, uh, he could not have been helped. And he had some, I mean, he required several stitches in his face. And uh, if he had not gotten that, who knows what would have happened to him with infection and things like that. But fortunately, we were there, able to stitch him up, and then we took him back uh, to Sabadilla. And so it was really kind of a, a neat experience to be able to be part of that. Uh, uh, you know, I've, I've talked previously about the miracle we had the year before when the man was hit with a motorcycle. Uh, the motorcycle guy was hit, and they were able to save his life by, by having doctors there. And we were able to get him to doctors. I'm not sure that we saved his life but we sure uh, helped him out and kept him from a lot of difficulties that, that could have happened. Uh, so anyway, uh, we came back and we had lunch and uh, uh, you know, each day we would have lunch together and it was a good time, kind of a pause in the middle of the day. And this was the time that I got sung happy birthday to many times. It was one of the the children's workers who like to sing happy birthday and she sang it over and over. What we're going to do now is I'm going to let you watch. Well, oh, that's right. I'm going to tell a couple of jokes and then I'm going to let you watch uh, Steve Laster's devotion and then we'll come back together for prayer time at the end. Okay, what it has ears but can't hear? 
a cornfield. Uh, what did the hot dog say when he won the race? I'm the wiener. All right. How do you turn soup into gold? You add 24 carats. And then uh, that's it. Okay. Uh, here's a little picture of Steve before we go into that. He and I each year kind of make a silly picture. And this was the first year we did a silly picture together. So you stay tuned and watch the devotion that Steve will be presenting about the salvation bracelet. And uh, I think you're going to tell us about the salvation yeah, bracelet. Yeah, and so this is one of the tools that we, we actually use here in our church a lot with our kids uh, at Woodland Heights. But, um, you know, colors are, that gets kids' attention. And so we actually build the salvation bracelets. We do it here at Woodland Heights before we go down, and then we ship them down. Uh, many of you, uh, I know Larry and Sarah Gwynn have come in uh, on a Wednesday night and helped assemble these. Several of you have done that. And so basically, it's the colors that we talk about. Um, and we really, some people might say we overdo this, but I don't think you can overdo it. So every single day, we're talking about these colors. And by the end of the week, these kids, they know exactly what these colors represent. Not saying that they all make a decision to trust Christ, but they, they know without a doubt what the colors represent. And so what I'll do... Uh, Daniel asked me to kind of go through one of our devotions. This is one of the things that we do. And so to make it a little interactive and a little fun, we asked the kids to help teach us Spanish. And so we'll start with the black bead. And, uh, you know, they'll teach us that the, the word for black in uh, Spanish is negro. And so we will teach them in English black, negro, and then we will just kind of reinforce what the black represents, which, as we know, it represents the sin that each of us are born with. And then we will go through each color. Uh, red, we'll say, what is red? Uh, English, red, Espanol, and they'll teach me that it's rojo. And uh, so we kind of go back and forth, some playful banter with that. And then we explain to them that the red represents the blood that Jesus shed on the cross for us. And we go through each one of those colors. White uh, in Spanish is uh, blanca, blanca, I believe. And we explain to them. Uh, now, here's, here's the tricky part. We talk here about white. Um, representing how Jesus comes in and cleans us up, makes us white as snow. Well, guess what they don't have in Honduras? <laughs> they don't have snow. And so we have to kind of get creative depending on where, our, where we are. Uh, but some of them actually have heard of snow, and so we were able to use that in the village this year. But we explained to them that the white represents Jesus coming in and cleaning up our hearts. Uh, blue uh, in, in Spanish is azul. And so we talk about baptism and how baptism, you know, that, that culture, Catholicism, is really, it's works-based. Mm -hmm. And so we explain to them that baptism does not save you, but it does uh, represent a change inside. It's a symbol, if you will. And so they really grasp that uh, green uh, in Spanish. We'll say Espanol uh, Verde, and so uh, which is the color of the background in your shirt, yeah. I've noticed. Did you plan that? Yes. Well, you did great. And so we explain to them that green represents... Um, once we become a new creation, a new uh, a Christian, we can't stop. We have to grow, and we grow, and we explain different ways uh, that you can grow through reading your Bible and praying, talking to God, uh, being around other kids and other people who can help grow you. Um, and so we kind of talk about that. And the yellow one, of course, uh, in Espanol is Amaretta, uh, which is yellow, and we talk about how yellow represents the streets of gold, how one day the Bible says, and we don't go down there and tell them this is what we say. Everything presented is what does the Bible say. Mm -hmm. And so the yellow represents the streets of gold that we will one day walk on because the Bible says so if we trust Christ. Wow. Yep. That's great. So y'all do that. I know you've done that every year with them. Yeah, we do that in, in different ways. We also have some color cloths that we talk about yeah. just to kind of reinforce that. But each of them get a salvation bracelet. Yes. Yep. To wear, and I think all of us had salvation bracelets yeah, too. Yeah, I'm still I, wearing mine. Um, I think I had to give mine back to you, but so we could give it out. Maybe we had, so. We had so many kids. Yeah, maybe so. You know, uh, as he said, there weren't that many kids in this village, but the village I went to, Sabadilla, all those kids were coming to your yeah. to your children's church. So it was really, really a, a, a good thing. And you know, when we go to Honduras, we go to the different villages, and you just never know what you're going to find. That's right. This one. To me, the thing that sticks out is how small it was. Yeah. But yet, how many people came despite the size of the village? Mm -hmm. And I found out, and I told you this last week, that Sabadilla had had, uh, we, they call themselves a brigade when a group comes in. They'd had a brigade three years before. Yeah. And all the people from Coralito had come over to Sabadilla. So many of the people there were going over. Each of the, the villages had a church 
that was sponsored by BMDMI, and so they, they cooperated with each other, and they made sure they knew about it. And of course, I'm sure that the kids that went to Children's Church and when it was in Sabadilla didn't get nearly as good. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, Y'all do a great job with it. And, and the main reason is because you've done it before. Right. You know, you said the first time you went, you had no clue. But every year, you get a little better. Just like when I go share the gospel every year, I feel a little more polished. Now, sure. this year, as I said, I wound up doing more ministry than evangelism. Mm -hmm. In fact, on Wednesday, I'm not sure that I shared the gospel even once. Mm. Of course, you know, we normally have finished about lunchtime. Now, we made another trip over that I'll tell you about when we come back. Very interesting trip back to Sabadilla in the afternoon of Wednesday. But that's kind of it, it for this time. Let's, let's move on down to our, our prayer time. Now, I hope you enjoyed that as I did. Uh, now let's uh, spend some time in prayer. I don't really have any special prayer requests today, but I do uh, want to remember to pray for you. So let's have a prayer time before we're done. Dear Lord, we thank you for the time that we've been able to be together. I pray that you be with each person there at Ridgemere. Father, keep them safe. And I pray for us here that you keep us safe as well. Father, we thank you that you've been watching over us through these past couple of months. And we just pray that it will be over soon and we'll be able to be together in person. We thank you again for allowing us to go to Honduras and have a ministry there. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you soon. Bye.